What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new around here, thank you for tuning into this episode. By the way, guys, if you guys want to buy, you know, any steelhead gear like you see behind me or anything that I wear, there's going to be a link. It is the very first link in the top of the description. It is saving you guys 15% off of your entire purchase. If it doesn't work, you can use my code. It's 541STLHD in the checkout. Now, it helps me. It helps steelhead gear. And you guys have been buying stuff and I really appreciate it. I just want to say thank you. But on today's episode, we are going to be doing a in-depth video on like how to set up all of your setups for low clear water winter steelhead fishing. Now, a few days ago, I posted a video and I said, if we get a hundred likes, I would make this video for you guys. And you guys absolutely crushed it on the like goal. You guys did it in like five hours. So thank you guys for that. And here's the video for you guys. Now we're going to be doing like eight setups today, but we're going to just start off with a pretty basic one. Okay. The first setup we're going to be talking about is a bobber dogging setup. Now there's two different types of floats. Uh, rephrase that. There's two different colors of floats. There's quite a few different types of bobber dogging floats, but what I'm going to be showing you guys today is the chubby bobber float. Now you have the black and chartreuse and you have the gray chartreuse and orange. Now I know a lot of people that like this color over this color. I personally like the orange top. It's just what I like. I actually found both of these on the river, which is kind of cool, but we're going to go over this setup. Okay. The first thing that you have is your bobber stop. Okay. Next you're going to have your little bead and now everything that you guys see these you know couple next things are what come in the chubby bobber packs if you buy them brand new from the store okay you have your little bead you have your chubby bobber and then you have your little bead so the bobber stop those two beads and that chubby bobber are what come in the packs next you're going to have your three-way swivel by the way guys this is 40 pound braided line all the braided line you guys are going to see in my setups is 40 pound power pro Okay, on your three-way swivel, you're going to use something that is a one-third ounce or close to one-third ounce. Okay, these are the little swivel or weights that I make. Uh, there's, you know, Dave's Tangle Freeze, and there's also P-Line Dragon Balls. So, off of that three-way swivel, you're going to be using 15-pound fluorocarbon. Okay, I personally like this Seaguar uh, STS. It's like orange label, I believe is what people call it. It's 100% fluorocarbon. I usually have to go through about two of these every season and they're only like nine dollars and 99 cents at the store so that's not bad for your line you know your leaders for the year so on my 15 pound fluorocarbon i have my bead set up okay you guys see me use this all the time uh i have a this is a joker right now tied on here a joker bnr joker i have my check seed bead there and those are eight aught check seed beads as you guys have seen before if you've seen my other videos and we have a size four owner it's called an ssw hook i actually found out i have some right here that i'll show you guys really quick these are what i like to use they have like a super needle point on them uh, i really like these over pretty much everything else that i've been using i think that these and gamagatsu are pretty much what's you know the top of the market and ben what's the top of the market you know in my opinion right now for beads i have right here that i just grabbed these are the three colors that i really like to use okay i've been really high on bnr beads and steelhead stalkers beads lately unfortunately i ran out of steelhead stalkers beads and this is just what i you know i have left right now so this is a 14 millimeter lucky this is a 14 millimeter joker and that's what i have tied on right there and this is a 16 millimeter clown. Now these come with little T-stops in the packs, but I don't ever use the T-stops. I like using my check seed bead so I can take my, you know, I can take my bead. I can slide it over, you know, take it off and then put a new color on and slide it back over. If you use the T-stops, um, you can do that, but it's really hard on your beads and you're going to rip more beads. So that is it for the bobber dogging setup. Uh, it's a super simple thing. It's pretty effective when you're fishing like slower, you know, ripply water because the surface of this bobber, there's more surface, surface room. So, you know, the water is going to bump up against that pushing, you know, pushing the bobber downstream better. So let's go ahead and move on to the next setup for you guys. All right, everybody. So here is the next setup. This is going to be a like suspended slash kind of dragging slip float setup with a different type of bobber now if you guys watch my channel you guys are going to see that this is the setup i really really like to use i have learned that i think this is more effective than using a regular bobber dogging setup that's just my opinion um lots of people have you know other opinions but let's roll right into it okay first thing you have is your bobber stop 
your bead, okay, you have a AF3, this is an Aerofloat AF3, 3 8 ounce, okay? These floats are super nice, and when they're dragging through the water, they have less surface room than a chubby bobber, so you get to fish the drift for longer because there's less uh, surface room for the water to push against, okay? On down your line, you have your other little bead, and the two beads, the bobber and the bobber stop, are what come in the pack, just like the chubby bobber. And off of your 40-pound braid, you have a three-way swivel. Now, a lot of people don't like fishing this way. Uh, they like to use inline weights. I personally don't. Okay, I have found that this way is as effective, if not more effective, because uh, a lot of the time you guys um, probably know this about me and I, I kind of talk about this all the time. I like to carry one rod into fishing spots. And a lot of these people that are all saying, well, that's not the right way. You, know, you need to do it this way and have another setup the other way. They have like 10 rods with them at all times. And a lot of, you know, you guys and even myself, I can't afford to have 10 super nice fishing rods. So I like to carry one and I like to be able to multi-purpose, you know, my setups and immediately tie something else on if I want to fish a spot. So this setup allows you to do that, okay? You want to have about a one-third ounce weight. So whether that's a Dave's Tangle Free, a P-Line Dragon Ball, or one of the little weights I make, that's what you're going to want. I found that the one-third ounce works really well with the three-eighth ounce floats, okay? Off of that, you're going to have your 15-pound fluorocarbon, your bead, your check seed bead, and your size four hook. Okay, this is, the point of this is, say I am fishing a run, okay? Say the run's five feet deep, right? I'm gonna set my bobber stop to five feet, okay? This weight is gonna, you know, my bobber's gonna be suspended on the, on the surface, and this weight is gonna be barely ticking the bottom while my bead is perfectly in the strike zone the whole time, okay? And your bobber, you know, pretty much is going to be suspended every once in a while. It'll tip over like this because, you know, my weight ticks the bottom. And that's what I really like about these. And you could also go deeper and even bobber dog it. So, like, where you're dragging this weight, you know, along the bottom the whole time. But what's nice about this, right, is say I want to fish a jig, okay? I can now take, and even with this bead setup if I wanted to, and I could cut my bead off i could just cut you know this half of it off and i could tie a jig onto this now i would personally use a eighth ounce or even a quarter ounce uh with the quarter ounce and the one third it'll pull your bobber farther underwater just because it's a little bit heavier but i would use something like this right just a little woolly bugger jig and you guys are going to see on the next setup i show you guys um i have one of the little arrow jigs and it's called like a nightmare series jig as well Nightmare pattern is awesome. Uh, black and white is awesome. That's what I've been doing really well with. Uh, if you guys saw my other video, I said I caught my first ever steelhead on a jig. And that's just kind of due to the fact of I've never fished jigs really. Like I have, but I just never really got into it because I've been so successful with bead fishing that I just don't see any need to really fish anything else. But you know, you could run a jig off of this setup I just showed you guys or even a worm setup. But this setup is super effective just for if you're wanting, you know, to multi-use fish is this three-way swivel, the one-third ounce weight, your three-eighth ounce float, and then whatever you choose to tie off of the back of that. Now, I'm going to show you guys the next setup. So for our next setup, it's going to be something very, very similar to what I just showed you guys, but different at the same time, okay? You guys are going to have, slide this down a little bit, you guys are going to have a bobber stop, your bead, your three eighth ounce af3 arrow float you're gonna have your bead and this setup is a little different and this is how i used to fish all the time until i realized that i don't like cutting everything off to tie you know i don't like cutting all my weights and everything off to tie on something different you guys are going to be using a in line weight now these are what i like to use they're just called trolling sinkers i guess yeah they're swiveling trolling sinkers okay those are quarter ounce now, there's lots of different weights on the markets. I have found that these cheap eagle cloth ones work just as well as anything else on the market. Uh, that's just my opinion. So, you're going to have your 40 pound braid tied into that. And off of that, you're going to use 15 pound fluorocarbon. Okay. On that 15 pound fluorocarbon, you're going to have your little jig. Now, this is what I caught my first ever steelhead on. Uh, and since that video, we have caught, I think, like five or six steelhead on this exact jig. Not on this setup, surprisingly. So I have actually fished this setup and Josh has fished, fished the setup I just showed you guys with the three-way swivel. Exact same jigs, you know, identical jigs, 50-pound uh, fluorocarbon, except the swivel was different, right? And his setup actually caught fish, like, I think it was like 
four to zero. He caught four and I didn't catch any and he caught it on that setup, okay? Now that kind of shows you guys that it's not always correct or what the people that preach it believe to be correct to have an inline swivel. It just is whatever you like to use. I don't really believe in steelhead fishing. There is such thing as like a right or a wrong. If I tie you know, a worm onto this or I tie you know, a worm onto a three-way swivel with a Dave Stangle free, I don't really think that either one of those is going to fish any better than the other. I just think if you're confident in it and that worm is down there in front of that fish's face, it's going to grab it whether it has this swivel or a three-way swivel. Just my opinion, okay? Now, on here, what's really nice about this, right, is you can tie this little quarter-ounce jig, or you can tie on a quarter-ounce jig head with a worm. And I believe that that is something that is really, really effective, is being able just to cut off my jig and just, bam, tie a worm right onto this setup. You know, don't worry about, like, man, is it not going to work? You know, just, bam, I have a quarter-ounce jig head, or I have a quarter-ounce worm head. That means that the weight is always the same, and... It's always going to work for this setup. That's what I like to show you guys is being able to do it with, like, carry less rods with you, but be able to, you know, tie everything on with very similar setups where you don't have to alter it too much to fish a bead or fish a jig or fish a worm. So that is it. So just recap of this little setup. We have our 3 8 ounce float. We have our inline weight, 15 pound fluorocarbon, and either have that tied into a worm or a jig. Now let's move on to the next setup. All right. So. For our next setup, we're going to be talking about fixed floats. Now, reach in my pocket here and grab out my fixed floats for you guys. So there are quite a few fixed floats on the market. Now, for today's video, and I'm probably going to fish with this tomorrow, I have a Mustad Addicted fixed float. Now, I think these are pretty good. They're a little on the expensive side, but they do work. Um, just if you guys watch this and you care anything about this, they say that you're supposed to use one of the little weights for... A quarter ounce and a two for eighth ounce now on here i have a quarter ounce jig head tied on and i use both weights for the quarter ounce i think the bobber rides better in the water i think when the fish grab it they feel less resistance and they hold on to your bait longer now i have a couple fixed floats here with me i'm going to show you guys okay this is an aerofloat af7 you guys can see they're pretty similar they're both lined through you know lined through the top like the middle of the float the addicted float is like balsa wood and the af7 is foam now when i tied this on i couldn't find this or else i would have tied this on i like the af7s a lot better than the addicted floats um these are pretty nice again with the af7s i like to use both weights uh for quarter ounce jig heads and i only use quarter ounce um if for some odd reason i can't find quarter ounce i will use eight ounce i mean i'm not going to say i'm not going to fish it because i can't find a yo know, quarter ounce jig head but i personally like quarter ounce okay and the last one that I have found that works really, really well is these little Eagle Claw floats, okay? These are Eagle Claw Flix floats. They're nine grams. Uh, two of them is only like $2.79. Now, these are also lined through because down here on the bottom, there's a little hole, right? So I put, you know, my little, uh, my little band on. I put it on my float. You know, I put my line down, put my other band, put on my float. And then I run the line through this little hole right here. And it actually is a line through float just like these, except the line just goes through the bottom. So if my bands break, you know, then my float is just like this on my line and I don't lose my float. So for this setup, what's really nice is you are able to tie on, you know, either a worm or a jig. So on here, I have tied on my pink worm with a Aero jig, uh, quarter ounce jig head. This does have a worm keep on it. I really like the worm keep. That's not a necessity, but I personally like the ones with the worm keep. You can also use the Mustad Addicted jig heads. I think that they're actually pretty good. Um, you know, a lot of the time I'm kind of scared to use Mustad stuff uh, just because of I've had really bad run-ins with quite a few of their things and hence why I don't represent it a lot. And you can use worms. Now these are addicted worms. Uh, I actually got these given to me. That's the only reason I have them. I only have one pack of them but I got them given to me uh, from Josh. I personally like Mad River or DRO worms. They have, there's like WFO worms. The WFO worms are pretty good, but what ends up happening is they get wet. And if for some odd reason they get wet, like you get some water in your bag, they change color really bad. And I have found that like, I'll catch fish on them. I'll, you know, when it's rainy, I'll take another one out. Some water will get in the bag and then they'll change color. And then they just don't ever catch a fish again, which is kind of unfortunate. And that's kind of my fault for letting them get wet. But I think that kind of sucks. That's the only downfall of WFO. But this is pretty much a fixed float. I have my 15 pound fluorocarbon. Same thing. 
It's just the STS uh, 100, you know, 100 yard pack of it. Uh, I have that tied, you know, about a 10 foot bumper onto my 40 pound braid. Um, this is just how I like to do it. There's lots of other ways you can do it, but I like to have a really long bumper and then I just tie everything directly into it. And we have one more setup I'm going to show you guys and then that's going to wrap up the video. All right. So this setup is something I don't really do a lot, but it's something that can be effective and you guys are probably going to guess what it is, but it is a spinner. Okay. I think anything from a size four and down is going to be really effective for low clear water. This is a size four gold steelhead by Buds. I have my 15 pound fluorocarbon. Again, the same thing, the orange label, you know, Seaguar STS 15 pound. I have about a 15 foot. Now with spinners, I like to run long leaders, right? Because I think what happens is those fish don't see anything go by them because they can't really see this in the water. So it's just nothing going by them. And then it's just, bam, a spinner going by their face at Mach 10 and you know they attack it and you hook the fish right i have 30 pound braid on my shorter bait caster rod that's what i like to do i like to use my little bass rods and just uh that's how i like to fling spinners they handle steel up perfectly fine a lot of people will say otherwise but that's what i like to do and that's what i'm preaching to you guys it's what my setups are my if you choose to use them awesome if not then oh well but that's the last setup i'm going to show you guys i haven't fished spinners a lot this year i haven't caught a steel out on a spinner this year um, I've caught lots of steel out in the past on spinners, but I just, uh, it's hard to leave beads when, you know, you're catching almost 30 steelhead in a year on beads. I've only caught one fish on a two fish on a worm and a jig. So you guys actually haven't seen the worm video. It was an absolute giant. And then Josh caught a absolute giant. So be prepared for those to come out on the channel, but that is where I am leaving this video at. I just want to say, thank you guys for watching this episode. Um, if you guys have anything else that you'd like to see, drop a comment down below. Uh, if you want to go buy some steelhead gear, I would greatly appreciate that. But uh, I guess that's going to be it. Hopefully these setups help you guys. Until next time, stay fishy. I love you guys. I'll see your guys' faces on the next episode.